The Chicago Bears beef up the trenches even more, drafting offensive tackle Larry Borum from Missouri in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft. What is up, guys? I'm back with the Chicago Bears draft update videos. I know this is actually all from yesterday. I apologize. I had to do these today instead of yesterday because I was busy making my Justin Fields hype video. So i um, getting these out to you guys a little bit late, but I'll be um, making videos on practically every single draft pick that we made yesterday. So uh, be on the lookout for like four or five videos coming out to you guys today. But yeah, man. So in the fifth round, Ryan Pace drafted Larry Borum off to tackle from Missouri, which honestly, man, I saw on Twitter, a lot of Bears fans at first were not the happiest with this pick because it wasn't the guy that they wanted. There was actually a lot of great receivers still left on the board, some great DBs as well. But when you look at this pick from a perspective of building this team for the future, surrounding Justin Fields with the proper protection he needs to be successful unlike our last quarterback this pick makes total sense to me okay it's actually a phenomenal pick in my opinion because guys what did us bears fans complain about the last two years bad offensive line play specifically bad offensive tackle play okay our interior still was okay for the most part with guys like cody white here james daniels a guy like sam mustafer stepping in but the tackle play was horrendous the last two seasons okay bobby massey was injured half the time, and when he was on the field, he wasn't that good of a tackle, so we cut him this offseason, and obviously, Charles Leno, you know, he's not the worst tackle in the NFL, probably, but he's not great at all either, okay? He plays pretty soft sometimes, he's not aggressive at all, he makes a lot of mistakes. Um, 2019, he made, you know, a ton of penalties too, so Charles Leno also, I mean, eventually, he needs to be replaced as well. I think this probably... It's going to be his last year on the Bears if he even does make the roster, which now that we drafted two offensive tackles pretty high, which Ryan Pace has actually never done before, okay? Ryan Pace has never drafted offensive tackle higher than round six in seven years. You know, now Charles Leno also could maybe not even make the roster. If I had to bet money on it, I would think Charles Leno still stays for at least this year because starting two rookies at tackle is kind of risky. But then again, I mean, we're not getting great play out of Charles I know anyway so why not start the rookie to jumpstart his development that's something that Ryan Pace, uh, Matt Nagy and offensive line coach Juan Castillo are going to have to figure out because you also don't want to put him in there too early and overwhelm him but if he's ready then why not start him okay and if you look at Larry Borum his scouting report what he's like man the Bears might have got themselves another steal okay because everywhere I read man this guy was actually one of the best offensive linemen in the SEC especially last year, okay? PFF Pro Football Focus ranked him as the second best tackle in all of the SEC, okay? And that's, again, going up against SEC-level talent. I know the SEC had a down year last year, so obviously you have to take that into account too, but he was still going up against grown men and dominating against them. In fact, he actually had a 0% pressure rate, which ranked first in the entire country, okay? A 0% pressure rate. Obviously, it wasn't exactly 0%. It was like 0. Uh, zero five or something like that, but it was damn close to zero percent. Okay, in uh, how many? Oh, so he took three hundred twenty-four pass blocking snaps last year. He only allowed one hit on the quarterback, only one sack, and two hurries. Okay, and then in twenty nineteen, uh, he had four hundred twelve pass blocking snaps, and he only allowed one sack again, only four hits, and fifteen hurries, which is really damn good. Okay, for a especially for a guy that we got this late, a guy that slid all the way to the fifth round. This guy has serious potential to actually be a starting offensive lineman in this league, okay? And a good one at that, too. If you also look at his stats against Alabama last year, okay? He had 44 pass-blocking snaps. He allowed zero sacks, zero hits, and zero hurries, okay? Against a pretty good defensive line. So to get a guy like this in the fifth round is just such insanely good value. If you look at his scouting report further, so he's six foot five. He weighs 322 pounds, so... Very good frame, very good build to play offensive tackle in this league. He's definitely not small at all. Um, One area where he does need to improve, though, is with his conditioning, which a lot of scouts have said is a problem. So he gets tired pretty often throughout the game. That's something he needs to work on. His footwork and his control could also use some work. So some technical aspects do need to be cleaned up. But those can obviously be cleaned up in the NFL, Um, you know, once he gets here and works with Juan Castillo. But if you look at just his pure physical traits, um, what he provided for that team in college for Missouri. I mean, he was a damn good offensive lineman for them. And also, if you look at his mentality, he is one of those mean, angry maulers 
as well. Okay, we already got one in Tevin Jenkins. We got another one in Larry Borum. Yesterday in a Zoom call, he actually said, as a player, I'm a mean, physical, dominant, big person that's going to displace people off the line of scrimmage. I play with that demeanor and that chip on my shoulder that I've had since I was younger, and I'm never going to lose that. And scouts also agree with this assessment, okay? When he's on the football field, he's also trying to maul people, okay? To dominate them, to bully them, to knock their ass to the ground. And I really feel like now we're having a culture change on the offensive line, okay? Because if you look at the last two guys we drafted, Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borum, both of them have a very different mentality than both Bobby Massey and Charles Leno had. Okay, Bobby Massey and Charles Leno, they may have had the body to play in the NFL, but they did not have the mindset to dominate. They never struck me as being angry, physical, mean dudes that just want to knock you on your ass. But these guys are, okay? And you can see it in their film. Even though they have technical aspects of their game that they need to clean up, those can definitely be, be cleaned up, guys. But you cannot teach somebody this mentality of being a dog on the football field, okay? Of trying to maul people, bring them to the ground. That's something that's just born in you. And both these guys, Larry Borum and Tevin Jenkins, have it. So I'm excited to see this culture change, you know, really take place in Chicago on the offensive line, especially because our offensive line has been so soft the past two years. But it looks like that might be changing for Andy Dalton and also especially for Justin Fields. Okay, and that's really going to help him in his development. When you're a young quarterback and you can be assured that you're not going to be hit every five seconds, okay, that you're actually going to have time to throw the football down the field, you're not going to have to worry about your blind spots. You're going to be protected adequately. That makes it a hell of a lot easier to develop as a quarterback in this league, okay? Because a lot, of, a lot of the parts of playing quarterback depend on your confidence. And if you are confident in your offensive line, then you're probably going to be confident in yourself as well and your ability to, you know, dominate the game. So I'm really happy for Justin Fields, man. It's also, it's been reported that Justin Fields is actually working out with Larry Borum last uh, summer. So that's pretty cool as well that he already knows Larry Borum. Um, he's going to already have experience working out with him. So maybe Justin Fields did play a role in getting this guy. Maybe he did give the front office his input. Um, most likely not though. Most likely the scouts just liked him in general. But either case, that's pretty cool. And, you know, like I've been saying this entire time, man, just this mentality that Larry Borum is going to bring to Chicago, his pure size, his ability to maul people and his dominance also last year in the SEC. I think that really makes this a good pick by Ryan Pace. I do recognize that other people wanted a skill position here, but guys, you have to build up the trenches first, in my opinion, before you do anything else. And the fact that we're finally doing that, it means that Ryan Pace has learned from his previous mistakes. Ryan Pace never seemed to care about the offensive line until this year, but now he deeply does care, okay? Investing high picks into offensive tackles. This is exactly how you build a team, guys. Okay, first you get your quarterback of the future, then you get your left tackle of the future, and you also get more help on the offensive line for that guy so he can be put in position to succeed. So good pick by Ryan Pace, in my opinion. Yeah, maybe we could have gone with a skill position here, but I'm more than fine beefing up the trenches even more. Let me know what you guys think about this pick in the comments down below. But as always, bear down.